Hi everyone and welcome to Easy Learning. Today we are going to cover the part 9 of our ABAT preparation series. QABA Code of Ethics, Policies and Procedures. These are basically some rules and regulations and some requirements by QABA boards which we are supposed to, which we are required to follow. So QABA Code of Ethics outlines the ethical principles and standard of practice for professionals certified by QABA credentialing board such as ABETS, QBAs and QASPS. So basically uh, whatever the uh, credential is certified by the QABA board we are required to follow these ethical principles and standards. We have to remember the names first which is professional integrity, client dignity, competence, confidentiality, dual relationship, supervision and training. So there are some more and uh, many more basically uh, general code of ethics policies and procedures but these are the most important ones. These are required to be followed mainly and uh, you might be confused about the type of MCQs from these code of ethics policies and procedures. So basically uh, they can ask you uh, about an example and they can ask you from uh, that uh, you have to tell like is it competency, is it integrity or is it client dignity like which uh, code of ethic do you have to follow if you are given this scenario. So uh, when it comes to professional integrity it simply means maintaining fairness, honesty and objectivity in practice. So you have to maintain the uh, integrity of the profession of what you are doing. You have to simply state what is being done there. Coming towards the client dignity, as the name indicates, you have to maintain your client's dignity. For example, uh, you can't stop your client from having lunch like okay you uh, you can not say this that uh, you are not doing this so I won't be giving you lunch you are not give, uh, doing this so I won't be giving you water these are some basic rights and it's not about just the food or water it's about all other right clients respect clients confidentiality and everything so you have to respect and support that you have to respect and support uh, the client's dignity and rights all over. Now coming towards competence. Competence basically is about whether or not you are allowed to do this and whether or not you can do this. So if it is under your scope of certification and competence like it is your skill, it is your ability and if it is your scope also that you are allowed to do this like for an ABAT you are allowed to do the data collection but you are not allowed to design or create the treatment plans and all so uh, basically it's about the competence that whether you are allowed to do and whether you can do it or not coming towards confidentiality as the name indicates you have to protect privacy of clients and their information however you can disclose the information when required by the law or with client consent so that will come under the confidentiality. Dual relationships. Dual relationships is like uh, you are friend with a client also uh, giving them uh, and then you are also giving them behavior therapy. So this is completely uh, unacceptable. Supervision and training. So talking about ABAT, you have to receive ongoing supervision and you have to adhere to the guidelines for the implementation of ABA practices. For example, you have to implement some uh, BIP plans. So you have to uh, so you have to take supervisions also uh, to implement the ABA practice correctly. Coming towards the MCQs, which of the following best describes the principle of professional integrity as outlined in the QABA Code of Ethics? The answer is maintaining honesty, fairness and objectivity in practice. 
what does the client dignity principle emphasize in the QABA code of ethics? Supporting the rights and dignity of individuals receiving services. Under the competence standard, what is required if an abate is asked to perform duties outside their area of expertise? They should seek supervision or training if needed. According to the confidentiality principle in the QABA Code of Ethics, when can client information be disclosed? Only with client consent or when required by the law. What is the purpose of dual relationship principle in the QABA Code of Ethics? To avoid conflict of interest and maintain professional boundaries. So this was all about today. Thank you for watching.